Okay, brother. Go for it. Well, we are live, bro. <laughs> we are live. Get my thing set up here. I think we're going to get a lot of people tonight. I think we'll get a lot of viewers tonight because uh, our guest tonight, uh, first of all, welcome everybody to um, Facebook Live with Mel and Charlie. Appreciate you guys every single night tuning in, <clears throat> joining the discussion, engaging in the discussion. We had a great discussion last night with Mason and, and Pekele uh, mm -hmm. on the Menioni Fish Pond. Tonight we got our mayor, Derek Kawakami, and our Kauai District Health Officer, Dr. Janet Berriman. Um, excited because there's a lot of things going on. A lot of things have been, are being said, a lot mm -hmm. of confusion, a lot of things are just, um, there's a lot of questions and not enough answers. So, well, I know a lot of people were just excited for last night's show. Oh yeah. And, yeah. You know, stand, standing round of applause. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, and that's what we, you know, we talked about transitioning away from, from COVID. So, you know, if there's anything that you guys want us to, to uh, address uh, and we can find the qualified, competent speakers, uh, we'd be more than happy to do so. You know, um, right now there's, there's so many moving parts with COVID, but, you know, we, Charlie and I both love to discuss other things as well. So let us know if there's anything pressing that you guys want us to cover. Uh, we definitely... Um, Anthony Curdy eating dinner from Smiley's oxtail soup. Way to go, buddy. That, that, there we go. You guys supporting local. Love it, love it, love it, man. That's what this is all about. Yeah. Yeah, if you guys got questions, uh, you can post them up in the comments. We'll try to get them, or you can try to message us. I just got a post that uh, someone messaged me a question. We'll try to get to them all. I'm not sure how this is going to flow. Uh, I, what I anticipate happening is the mayor and Dr. Berman doing a presentation. Uh, what the one dangling probable means? Is it the same one as the whole time or is it okay? I, I have no, I'll ask, I'll ask. But yeah, so we're gonna let them uh, share with us, give us some updates of what's going on. Uh, I can tell you that there, there's just a lot of, a lot of questions uh, floating all around and I'm sure Charlie gets bombarded as well. You know, tonight on the news, one of the questions that maybe, maybe you can answer this, Charlie, I don't know. On the news tonight is, uh, you know, the program they have going now where the caretaker can get a shot, that that's going to be discontinued unless the caretaker is 75 years of age or older. Uh, so that's one of the questions that I want to ask. Uh, I understand today that um, several locations, I shouldn't say several, two that I, I know of absolutely know and confirm that they ran out of vaccines today and um, now they got to wait for the next shipment. So Hopefully, Dr. Behrman can, can update us uh, going, going forward. And thanks, Paul. Appreciate that, bro. Um, because there are. I have a lot of questions. I know we all do. But we only have an hour. So we want to we wanna try to touch on the, on the topics that, that affect most people. So if we miss your question, uh, you know, we'll definitely send it over and get back to you guys later, OK? Yeah, and please share the heck out of this one, guys. You know, this is one of those that uh, information is coming straight from the horse's mouth. You know, I, I, hear, I hear so much conflicting information. Was that on Kauai? No, not on Kauai, not on Kauai, um, Sarah. It was not on Kauai. So I, will, I can, I'll, I'll, again, I'll share that with you uh, in a text or a message. Not on Kauai. Um, I, you know, Kauai, from what I understand, and I'm sure we'll get the lowdown tonight, from what I understand, Kauai is, is doing very well. And uh, so we will, we will see what happens. Um, but, you know, one of the tough, the, tough, the tough questions that I have that I will ask tonight and, uh, is regarding the Lieutenant Governor's plan to uh, promote or to, yeah, to get the governor to uh, remove quarantine for those that have had their second vaccine shot. Uh, that, that, that concerns me. And again, I'm not gonna um, try to answer that question. I'll let the, the expert do that. But uh, I saw Charlie's post today. Charlie, you hit it right in the head, man. Right, and, and I saw you cited your source was Harvard, so. Uh, can, can you hear this? No. 
Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Mel and Charlie Live. Yes, sir, we got it. Okay, just gotta make sure. Okay, just gotta make sure that get my sauna fix ready for tonight. <laughs> so anyway, I'm excited. I'm excited for tonight. Uh, you know, I'm very excited. Whenever we can get the mayor and, and Dr. Berman on, for us, it's it's uh, mm -hmm. it's it's one of the highlights of, of our show. Obviously, which we know that, which, uh, which post did you were you referring to today? That I I, I, I we, which, were you talking about the that we simply do not know. Oh, if, yeah. Because one that's of, what everyone is saying. That's what everyone is saying. Because one of the questions I would like to ask, and you know, I'll, I'll share it now with you, my brother, is that I wanna. You see, I think we're getting a lot of information out there, and when it when, and when it's being promoted. And it and it's it's really not true yet, yet, right? And I don't think we should be promoting it. That's what's giving everybody this false sense of, and you know, you, we don't need worry. And and that's well, dangerous. That is dangerous. You know, humans are intelligent people. Mm -hmm. Whether we all use our intelligence, that's another story. But we're intelligent people. So, if if they say, if someone in that in that level of authority tells you that if you come here with your second vaccination and you completed your two shots, that you don't have to quarantine, what would a reasonable person infer? Really? A reasonable person would infer that you are immune and you cannot pass the virus. And that has not been proven yet. And that, that's all I wanted to ask yeah. Dr. Berman tonight. Yeah, she is in the waiting room. I'm gonna bring her in. Okay. Because I know how lonely it can be in that waiting room. We don't want to keep the doctor waiting, man. Yeah. She's like Here. she's like a celebrity too, Charlie. I don't know if you've noticed yeah. that, but she's like now become a statewide celebrity. She's celebrity uh, status as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you never knew who Dr. Janet Berman was early on. They had everybody else talking, but now whenever they the go-to person for the Department of Health is Dr. Janet Berman. So we're pleased, honored, and, and just blessed to have you on tonight, Doc. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Are you telling us the truth? <laughs> yeah, it is actually. You know, when I when I get to talk to you guys and, and your listeners about medical stuff, it makes me feel like when I was a pediatrician and I got to talk to parents about their kids' health. And I really enjoyed that part of the job. So I, I, it is a pleasure. Good, good. good. Well, I, I tell you, Dr. Berman, um, for us, it's it's just an honor. And, and for us, we are uh, thousands of listeners, thousands of viewers that are sponges and we absorb. We want to learn. That, that's what this is all about. We just want to learn. It's not a debate. This is not a, this is, this is simply an opportunity for you all experts to educate and inform us what's going on. And, uh, and again, it's always it's always an honor to have you in this. And, and the mayor, we get two of you. It's like a double, double whammy. It's a double honor. <laughs> double honor. Yeah. There's one of the hardest working guys on the planet right now. He certainly about. is. He's an amazing partner and he's doing a great job. And he's muted. Hi, everybody. Oh, there we go. What's up, the mayor? Um, <laughs> I know, man. I know. Oh. But you know what? Uh, I just like go straight into it because we only have an hour, but I just wanted to say uh, on behalf of all of us here in the state, we appreciate you. We appreciate Dr. Behrman. We appreciate our leadership here on Kauai. Uh, it really seems uh, that our island is, and, and I'm not just saying this for me, it's from our viewers that, that comment all day long that are just jealous and they, they're, uh, they're, they're, they're just uh, impressed with what Kauai has done. And uh, we share that sentiment and we, we cannot thank you both enough for spending an hour with us tonight. So thank you and welcome. Uh, thank you. And, you know, we, we do have a great team, um, Mel and Uncle Charlie. But, you know, if people want to really see where the credit should go, um, they, they should take a look in the mirror. I mean, our people have been phenomenal. I, I know it's been a long haul, mm -hmm. but I cannot think of a better place to be to deal with a worldwide disaster and challenge in Kauai. So people should really credit themselves. And and I want to thank you folks. I mean, this, I don't think you realize how this helps the 
keep people engaged and to let people know that we're just all in this together. You know, I think um, one thing we've made it perfectly clear, in fact, we've been reiterating it for the last couple of weeks, and that is, you know, we're just as, we're just as um, informed as the person next, next to us. And so our objective is trying to get the information because what we're starting to see now is the people, they're very Akamai, they're very smart, but it can be confusing and, and, and things can start uh, getting mixed up and, 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 and sort of like a wrong, wrong impression of what's going. And so that's when the messaging, even though there's good intent, it falls at the wayside because they say, wait, I'm getting too confused. And so that's why we, we, we felt the need, and I'm, I'm glad you reached out, Dr. Berman, that if you could come on along with the mayor, so we could talk about talk about some of those things. So the, the viewers and and you know, um, one of your largest supporters, uh, Mary, is, is your cousin, cousin Patty Kawakami from Oahu. She's constantly writing us, and she just sent uh, me and Auntie Steph uh, uh, one of her homemade masks. So you know, we thank her a lot, and we thank her very very much. But she too, she's very very into it, and you know. There's not a time that goes by within a day that I um, that Mel or I we don't get a message from our viewers saying, "Hey, are you getting this person on? Yes, can can you ask them this?" So we we've got a we've got a whole bunch of things that we, we do want to ask you folks tonight if it's possible, and and you know just just tell it like it is. And uh, again, you know the viewers are at a point where there we are very blessed to have you both, and they they made mention on uh, many times on our on our feeds that. We're so glad that we have a mayor such as yourself, mayor, and um, and and uh, health officer such as yourself, Dr. Fairman, that they're very, very um, pleased that they're not in a searching mode all the time. So, just wanted to let you know that. Thank you. So real quick, real quick, before I turn it over to you, mayor, <clears throat> um, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to turn it over to you, and you run it from there, and we'll write in on questions. But Sarah Blaine is the mayor's chief of staff. She's on the call or on the sh on the show, or whatever. And um, she, I can see she is already responding to some of your questions. So if you punch in a question in the comments, uh, check check the comments because Sarah is responding. And I, again, Mayor, I cannot say enough of Sarah. She's been just an amazing person throughout this. So uh, check, don't, just don't punch the, the question in and, and forget about it. Uh, if I don't answer the question or we don't ask the question, it's because Sarah already answered it in the comments. All right. With that, Mayor, take it away. Um, well, you know, um, this is different. I'm usually not used to taking it away. Um, but, okay, um, let me do this. Let me, let me do this, Mayor. Uh, why don't we just get an update on what's happening here on Kauai uh, as far as the, 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 the vaccines are going, um, what's the, the rollouts that's occurring, the, the different uh, levels or uh, whatever you call it, classifications of people. Um, and then Dr. Berman, please help us with with the information on vaccines statewide. There's a lot of, a lot of <clears throat> talk about we're running out of vaccines and, and so forth. But why don't we start, Mayor, with just what's, what's going on on Kauai right now and, and what's available to our people uh, that may be uh, anxious to get a vaccine? Sure. Um, and I'm glad we get to speak about vaccines a little. And um, there, there's a reason why um, I, I come on with Dr. Berriman. And it's really... This response requires a, a coordinated effort on many different fronts. And I think um, what has been really Kauai's secret to success is being able to rely on good information from our public health officials. It's a very different world that they live in. Um, there's a, there's, there is a difference between physicians and public health and, and that realm. Um, and they both complement each other very well. But uh, I've gotten to learn that a public health official um, lives in a different world, has different priorities at times. And um, as an elected official um, that has to administer uh, different policies, um, when dealing with a health crisis, it's best to listen to your health officials. That is one thing that I think um, had the rest of the nation chosen to, to actually do, um, we would be in a different situation. But nonetheless, here we are. And um, speaking about vaccines, I want to let people know that really, you know, there's some very strict federal guidelines. And the State of Hawaii Department of Health has decided to 
uh, walk lock in lockstep with those guidelines. As far as the county's role, um, we play a, a small role, a supportive role. Uh, we make sure that we have facilities available to the Department of Health that if they need staffing support, that we do things on our end to make sure that we can provide as much staffing support as possible um, to ensure that the facilities are safe. And um, with that, I'll let Dr. B dive into some of the nitty gritty details of the vaccine and its deployment. Well, can I, can I before she does, I, I, I wanna throw one out right now because I, I, I've been just watching some of the comments coming across. A lot of it has to deal with um, the scheduling. Now I know there's been a uh, there's been a confusion about VAMS, so I, I checked with uh, VAMS here on Kauai, and I was told because um, tomorrow I, I get my second dose tomorrow uh, for all my workers at the both sides of the, the hospitals at Mahelona and and at Kibiyami. But I noticed that a lot of people on our feed tonight that signed up with the Hawaii Pacific Health on Oahu. Now, I'm not sure if they participate because VAMS is, has so many categories within VAMS and one of it is scheduling. So I know here HHSC does not, they have VAMS so you can get the vaccine, right? But they don't participate in a scheduling portion. So that's why if you want to schedule, you need to schedule directly with them. So the people that are having problems, they, they're given an appointment, but they can only go to a certain screen and it doesn't let them go beyond that, Dr. Murray. Would that be something with the VAMS program, with the CDC, you know, the portal, VAMS, or is it with Pacific Health, Hawaii Pacific Health? What does it sound like to you? This is for people on Oahu or people on yeah. Kauai? People on Oahu. Yeah, um, you know, I, I'm i afraid I really don't know how Hawaii Pacific Health is using VAMS on Oahu. I do know that here on Kauai, the health department is using VAMS as our scheduling and registration portal, as you've as you've seen, and that's for people who are identified uh, as in an eligible work group to get the vaccine. And they receive an email from the Centers for Disease Control that gives them a personalized access link to VAMS. Our the hospitals here are using VAMS, but the patients who get the vaccines there are not using VAMS. The hospitals are putting the data into it afterwards because that's actually a federal requirement. Um, so I'm I'm sorry, I'm afraid I can't help your Oahu listeners with with that piece. But um, maybe I can give just a, a brief overview because again, I know I've said this before, but because Kauai is small, it's a little bit easier to get your arms and your head around what's happening here because it's not that complicated. And that's that's part of why it's been a little bit easier for us, frankly. So, so far, and I just checked in with my staff, as of today, we've given about 6,000 doses of vaccine here on Kauai. So, and uh, all, we think that about a thousand of those were today. We gave over 500 at the Department of Health's clinics and about 500 at the three hospital clinics today. So today's been kind of a a banner day for us. That's the most we've ever given in one day. Um, so uh, there's a lot to talk about. As you said, there are there are tiers of people who are eligible, and the the first three are Group One A, One B, and One C, because everybody wants to be Group One, right? So broke so the federally, nationally, one was broken down into three, and One A was the healthcare workers and residents in long-term care facilities. And that's where we started um, in December. And then 1B includes a whole lot of categories, but at the top of 1B is first responders, frontline, uh, frontline essential workers, and Kupuna 75 years of age and older. And 1B, which is this great big category, is where we are on Kauai, and we're still, there are still some 1A folks who need to be vaccinated too, but 1A and moving well into 1B is where we are. And statewide, that's where we are too, but where we are in 1B and what part of it we, you know, sort of bid off first is a little bit different county by county. Um, and the, the partners, because this really depends on partnership. So there, there are actually four dif five different partners, if you will, here on Kauai working on vaccines. So one is the health department. And we're running what's called a pod or a point of dispensing at the um, Kauai War Memorial Convention Hall in Lihui. 
and that's on Monday, on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday from eight to twelve. And it's none of these is open to the general public. They're open to people who meet specific criteria. So to be vaccinated in the health department's run pod, you need to receive an email invitation uh, from the Centers for Disease Control and from the health department. And the way that happens is that your employer gives us your name and email address. Or if you live in a facility like a shelter that's eligible, we get your name and email address from that. It is on the kawaii.gov slash vaccine website. There's a little survey that you can fill out. So if you are in a category that you think should have already been offered a vaccine and you haven't been, you can fill out that survey and we will look at it, look at what your category is and let you know whether you're eligible or when you might be. Um, so that's one partner. The other big partner is our hospitals and I was counting them as two, but anyway, we can just call the hospitals one. So Wilcox Hospital, Samuel Mahelona and Kauai Veterans Memorial Hospital. And they initially focused on vaccinating their own healthcare workers. And starting last week, they're also now the ones vaccinating the Kupuna age 75 and older. So that's a really important group. And we are extremely appreciative of the hospitals doing that because as you've probably experienced, the VAM system that we're using can be pretty hard to navigate to register in. And the hospitals have each set up their own registration and scheduling systems, which I think are a little bit easier. For folks to navigate. The other, the third piece that we don't see so much is that CVS, the national pharmacy chain, has a federal contract to vaccinate residents in long-term care facilities, large nursing homes. So they started doing that in December and they'll be going back and doing their second doses soon. So that's also happening. And then the fourth track is really uh, not fully formed yet, but we just had a meeting this afternoon, and that's statewide, the federally qualified health centers. So here on Kauai, that's Ho'olalahui. Um, they have enrolled to be a vaccine provider, and they are doing their planning, and they anticipate that they will be starting to give vaccine very soon to, to their uh, established patients already. So that will help us get, get vac vaccine out to even more people. So that's, that's kind of the lay of the land here on Kauai right now. Dr. Berman, can you give us the, the, the website again, the vaccine uh, yeah. website? It's kauai.gov slash vaccine. Simple, kauai.gov forward slash vaccine. Mm -hmm. Awesome, awesome. Okay, now, um, was there anything else? I just have a bunch of questions that they wanted to toss out and- um, I think questions are the way to go. <laughs> okay. The first question is, uh, on the news tonight, they mentioned that the caretaker program, where if you, you are, are a caregiver and you brought a 75-year-old person to get their vaccine and you registered as well as the caregiver, you could get your uh, vaccine as well. Uh, on the news tonight, they mentioned that they may be, or they will be stopping that program. Have you heard anything about that? And is is that in place already? So I didn't listen, I didn't hear the news tonight. I know that that was a big topic of discussion today. So it was a, a decision by the hospitals actually that while they were vaccinating the Kupuna 75 and older, recognizing that a lot of those people would come with a caregiver or an attendant or someone who helps them in their daily lives, recognizing that vaccinating those people provides another level of protection around our Kupuna they decided to offer it to one caregiver per kupuna who comes. Unfortunately, um, this week, as you've also heard, and looking forward to next week, it looks like the state is not getting as many doses of vaccine as we thought we might. And so there's some concern that by vaccinating <clears throat> a caregiver along with the kupuna, we may decrease the amount of vaccine that's available to the seniors over 75 who are really the highest priority. So I know it was under discussion to consider, uh, to reconsider that policy, but I hadn't heard what the, what the final decision was. But if, if that's the decision, that's the reason. Now, is, is, there, is there a reason, one, is it, is it because the uh, say Pfizer or Moderna, they're having a difficult time ramping up their production. Is that the reason why we're, we're, we're facing this problem? Or because um, in the same token, we just heard that 
a certain lot that was produced by Moderna had a high increase of uh, uh, severe reactions to the to the vaccine. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So, you know, they're talking about um, advising that whoever was issued that batch from what the news said that they get rid of the vaccine. So that would be almost like putting, uh, getting the vaccine into people's arms, uh, like a big handicap if they went that route, understanding, you know, right. what's happening. Did, did you hear anything about that? So um, I know that there was such a batch identified. What I heard this morning is that there, that none of it had, had shipped to Hawaii. So I think that that's not a pressing issue for us right now. You know, it's very difficult to assess from where I sit what all the things are that are contributing to the vaccine not flowing as quickly as we would like it to and as we expected it to nationwide. But I do think it's really important for people to understand that, that the vaccine at the national federal level is allocated to each state based on each state's population. And that allocation is only being made one week at a time. So people want to know, well, how much vaccine are we going to have next week and the week after and next month and six months from now? And when is this group going to be eligible? And when is that group going to be eligible? But because we really only have one week of information at a time, we really can't predict what that flow is going to be like. Um, so I think that, that the decision to only sort of make those allocations one week at a time was done out of an abundance of caution that at the, the operation warp speed folks didn't want to over promise. They didn't want to say, we'll give you this and then have to come back on it. So they decided they would just do it one week at a time. I think that that policy is also something that's being looked at and reconsidered because as production continues to ramp up at Pfizer and Moderna, and as we anticipate in the next few months, additional vaccines are approved, I think we'll be able to have more confidence in the supply going forward and be able to make allocations a little bit further ahead. But it's really, it's really that limitation of the national allocation that then ties our hands in terms of the really long-term planning. Is there, should we be concerned about 75-year-olds uh, that <clears throat> got their first shot that there may not be adequate supply for them to get the second shot? And, and the second part of that question is, are, are we concerned that not all, we won't have enough for all of the 75 plus um, yeah. residents? Um, I, I think we can be very confident that we will have enough vaccine for everyone to get, a, everyone who wants it, to get a first dose and a second dose. How quickly that will happen is much harder to pin down, but, you know, they're, the companies that make these vaccines have a lot of incentive to make vaccine, right? That's, that's their job and that's what they get paid for. And we can only, I, I think, and I, the mayor knows, I don't tend to be the most optimistic person about things related to COVID. I tend to worry a lot about all the things that can go wrong, but I feel very confident that vaccine production is only going to increase because it, you know, the more you practice, the more you build facilities, the more you, you get all of your, your gears going, the better job you're going to do. So I think that we should anticipate, you know, there'll be hiccups along the way, but that the general trajectory is going to be toward more vaccine flowing more quickly. I, I guess to, to clarify that question, just, let's just say the, the, the 75 pluses that have already had the first shot or getting the first shot because you got to get that second shot within a, a determined period. I think those are the ones that I'm, I'm more concerned about. Are we, you think we have enough? And yeah, and let me so ask let me... this, this is the, 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 the personal question is my wife is scheduled to get her <laughs> shot with her mom on Friday, mm -hmm. but I'm concerned that, Hey, you know, you, you get the first shot and I'm talking about my wife. Um, Number one, is she taking away a second shot from someone that's 75 or older that already had the first shot? That, that is kind of my concern. Right, so the thing about the second shot is the timing between the first and the second shot is a minimum interval. It's not okay. a maximum interval. Got it. So if it's the Pfizer vaccine, it has to be at least three weeks after your first dose when you get your second dose, but it can be longer than that. Okay. And the same with the, the, with the Moderna, it's a minimum of four weeks, but it can be longer than that. So people don't have to feel 
anxious if they can't get the vaccine right on the day that's three weeks after or four weeks after. It's okay if it's a week or two or even a month or more after that. We don't know exactly how much longer is okay, but um, with the vast majority of vaccines, and as a pediatrician, I've given many, 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 many vaccines, you basically never have to start over in a series. If you've given one and the next one was due in six months, but you don't see the child for six years, you just give the second one. You don't have to go back to the beginning again. So that gives me, again, optimism that, that those longer intervals will be okay. Now, Dr. Berman, you, you, you mentioned that on the federal level, each, each state is, is dependent upon population base. That's, that's the allocation, right? Mm -hmm. um, can you address, you know, there, there's still many more concerns about vaccine vacations where people are actually making the claim that they're, they're going on the VAMS portal and they say they're maybe in Arizona or uh, Montana and they come to Hawaii and they demand getting uh, vaccinated here. Mm -hmm. um, does the portal where they enter, does it? kind of like merge into a Hawaii location because I don't think they're signing up to get vaccinated, but saying on that portal that I'm going to get vaccinated in Hawaii. It's just they're registering themselves to get vaccinated, correct? Well, so as I said, the way we're using VAMS here, you can't just go in and register yourself. You have to have been put into the system by the district health office staff here on Kauai. So that's the only way to get into the VAMS system here. And um, you know, we, we don't want to be in the business of creating a, a vaccination vacation uh, business, although I suppose it might be good for tourism. Um, but, but we also have to recognize that, especially on Kauai, we have a lot of people who spend a good part of the year here, uh, four to six months, our, our snowbird population. And you know, for that population, especially if they are older, and they're here at, during the time of year when they would become available for vaccine, I think the responsible thing to do is to vaccinate them. So of course, there's some, some gray zone in there. How long do you have to be here? We're looking at sort of if you live on the order of half of the year here, uh, then we'll go ahead and vaccinate you if it's your turn by your age or when we get there by other criteria. Okay, one follow-up question now to the mayor. With regards to the talk that's been going around about um, once you're vaccinated, maybe like um, relaxing the restrictions of coming into the state of not having, you know, basically if you're, if you're vaccinated, you're good to go. What's your feeling about that, sir? I'm gonna take direction from, you know, the public health experts that understand the vaccine. I think what people need to realize is that you know, this is uh, unprecedented. I, I don't think um, there's been a bigger mass vaccination deployment um, in the history of mankind. And although the science uh, moved very quickly, the integrity of the science uh, was never compromised. Yet, there is still uh, much to learn about the vaccine itself. Um, and so much is being learned every day that it's hard to to keep track. So I know that um, there have been uh, thoughts about um, relaxing some of the restrictions. I, I can just say that I'd be very, I'm hopeful. Of course, that I hope that this vaccine allows us to return to a, a sense of normalcy where we can actually relax um, some of those restrictions. However, uh, until we learn more about it, how long the vaccine is going to um, be efficient, if there's going to be more variants, how effective this, this vaccine is going to be. Um, we're, we're not going to uh, rush to run out the front door um, and, and risk running straight into a brick wall and having to run back uh, inside again. Our whole mission is to keep advancing forward, keeping the island safe, getting the economy up and running, keeping the economy open, all the while learning um, as we go along. And I think, you know, for a lot of people, you know, whether or not they choose to take the vaccine, it, it's a personal decision um, for myself and, our, and my family. Uh, we decided um, that we're going to trust the science and take the vaccine. Um, and as participants, um, we feel like we're helping 
um, society uh, learn more about the vaccine, um, how, how long it'll last. But um, I think Dr. B can, can talk to, to some of that as well. All I can say is that I hope um, that the vaccine will allow us to loosen restrictions, but it's a little too early to say what that would look like or when that would happen. There, there's, there's basic, there's one really kind of key question that we don't yet know the answer to that will help a lot with deciding how the vaccine affects travel and quarantine and stuff like that. And that's that while these vaccines were being evaluated in the clinical trials, the focus was really on how effective are the vaccines at keeping people from getting sick with COVID-19, so from developing symptoms. And we've all heard the 90, 95% effective. Well, they're, they're very, very effective at preventing people from becoming sick with symptoms. But we all also know that many people who are infected with COVID-19 are asymptomatic. And what we don't know about the vaccines yet is how good they are at, people, at preventing people from having an asymptomatic infection where they might still spread it to other people. So that work is going on, but without knowing that, we don't really want to say, yeah, you've been vaccinated, come on, no restrictions necessary, because it's possible that even vaccinated people could still be spreading the vaccine, even though they're protected from getting sick themselves. Yeah, when we had uh, Dr. Jerome Kim uh, from the International Vaccine Institute um, a few times on, he's from South Korea, and he made it very clear, uh, he, you know, he, he, he's very clear, he made it clear that we don't know. And the trials weren't done for that purpose. It's exactly as you've just stated. So, you know, I, I think that's a lot of the, the information we get watching the news and people get concerned and they get worried because, especially our viewers, because they watch our show, they heard the director general of the International Vaccine Institute. They heard every single expert say the same thing, that that's just the question we don't know. And uh, time will tell. And I agree with the mayor. I hope and pray that this is this will protect others from uh, getting the virus if you're vaccinated, but we don't know that right now. And, and I think uh, I think we gotta we gotta remember that. And um, that was uh, that was one of the the bigger questions we had for you all tonight. Um, I'm trying to go back to the scheduling. The uh, when when do you anticipate the 65 and uh, above? When will the 65 year olds be able to be added into the mix? So in the, in the national prioritization, the 65 and up are in group 1C. So remember I said group 1B is all the frontline essential workers and the 75 and older. There has been direction from the White House to go ahead and vaccinate people 65 and older, even sort of out of order of that national, that national prioritization framework that was put together. Um, Given that the older you are, the higher your risk of serious illness is, um, you know, I think it makes sense to focus first on really getting as many of the 75 and older as we can and wait to, to open things up to the 65 and older after that and when that supply of vaccine opens up a little bit more. You know, I can't tell you when that's going to happen. Uh, I think I should look at the graphic on our website. We're saying sort of early spring which is um, not a very specific time frame, So it's not going to be in the next two weeks. Um, it may be as early as, as the middle of next month. It may not be until a little bit later than that. I, I think it's gonna be relatively soon, but we also have a lot of frontline essential workers, people who work in agriculture and in public transportation and in the postal service and in our schools and daycare. Um, all of those people are also really key to vaccinate um, so, and it's not, I mean, everyone is important and everyone will have an opportunity to have the vaccine. We just can't offer it to everyone all at once. So we have to make these decisions, which are um, somewhat arbitrary, but are also based on public health information about how we can have the most impact on saving lives and preventing spread of disease. Yeah, and I'd like to add on just from a, a layman's standpoint, I mean, you, you know, my wife is a school teacher. She, you know, she got her first dose. Um, my role uh, as a member of the incident management team, you know, our incident management team, of course, um, they got their first dose. 
but I, I want to just remind people that life for us has not changed. We still avoid um, mingling, at least for you know my wife and I, outside of our household. Um, we we still wear our masks. We still practice physical distancing, um, and so you know we we really the vaccine provides that layer of protection, but. Um, I think we all have to be mindful. And, and as mayor, I feel a responsibility to remind people that this is a huge leap forward as far as advancement in our response to COVID-19. And it has injected, no pun intended, a, a huge glimmer of hope into our operation. But it, it would be um, irresponsible for myself as mayor to mislead people and say that the vaccine is going to be the cure-all, no, we're still going to have to wait till we achieve some sort of herd immunity where a, a large majority of our population gets immunized uh, through the vaccination and, and that could require some time. And so it still requires a level of diligence on our part to, to keep each other safe. And so that means for us, um, we still practice the basic um, the basic uh, measures that will generally uh, keep people from getting sick, period. Whether it's a cold, a flu, um, you know, uh, um, it, it just, it's good preventative measures. I think moving forward, um, when things return to normal, we may be wearing masks during flu season. We may be wearing masks when there's a cold outbreak. I think that if you show up to work with a runny nose and you don't have a mask on uh, when things return to normal, people may look at you a little different. So I think it's going to change the behavior, but it also helps society um, in, and civilization because less people will be getting sick in general. Yeah, and I, you know, <clears throat> I would like to think that um, society, especially here in Hawaii, because I know a lot of people are anxious to get the vaccines and that's a good thing. But I think right now, based on the, the, the resources available that we would all agree that the 75 and above would be the priority group. That in fact, like you, like the Titanic, you know, women and children first, you get on the boat, except for that one clown that decided to take the seat on the boat. But I would hope that all of us would, would be supportive of that, that, that schedule. Yeah, we all wanna get the vaccine, but until we get that group, that vulnerable group taken care of, um, you know, if we had unlimited vaccines, that'd be a different story, but that's not the case right now. So I'm hoping that everybody will understand that, you know, we'll, we're all gonna get it in time, um, but we, we gotta make sure we protect our kupuna. And, and, and I appreciate what, what you guys are doing. And cause I saw the pressure that was already being put on once the federal government came out and said 65 and above. I, I read the comments, I, I hear people but let's get, let's take care of our 75 plus and, uh, and then we can, and then we can, you know, expand that to 65 and above. So, uh, and, I, and I'm hoping everybody agrees with that. I really do, because we got to take care of them. It's just, I'm, I'm really, really concerned. One of the things that, that, and I already said it, but I'm concerned about the, the amount of vaccine and uh, you, you just, we just don't know. There's no, no one can tell you that, or tell us that, that, when and how much is coming. So we got to wait and see. And hopefully the new administration will change up some policies and, and get us more vaccine quicker. Hope so. You know, there's this, I wanted to ask about the, uh, the resort bubble, um, uh, Mayor, how, how's that program going? You know, um, from what I gather, uh, it seems to be, uh, working okay, right? It's not, I think, what um, would be the optimal return to the visitor industry, but it allows Kauai um, to be able to uh, continue to reopen um, at an acceptable level of risk. Um, and um, so from our end, uh, it seems to be balancing the health needs as well as a slow return uh, economically. There have been more resorts that have um, submitted applications. Um, from what I understand, uh, a lot of people 
have just changed their travel plans. Um, many visitors, instead of um, coming to Kauai first, are now making Kauai their second or third uh, destination. And so they are just participating in the inter-island uh, safe travel program. And so pe people are adjusting. Um, we're seeing some slow return. Uh, whether or not that's enough for the visitor industry, I think it's best to let them speak uh, on the program and how it's working. Of course, uh, everything that we're doing is, uh, you know, to, to continue to move forward. Uh, we do have a general concern about the increasing numbers on the continental United States. Um, but like you've seen, uh, Inner Island at the time um, doesn't seem to be as risky. We're hoping to uh, keep it that way. So I think that in general, when we look at the state of Hawaii's response, it's important to realize that it's not only what happens on Kauai, it's what happens on all the other islands and of course um, across the nation and across the world that really impacts our ability to, to be able to move forward um, sooner rather than later. But it seems to be at least uh, providing uh, some increased foot traffic. Yeah, I, I saw an article um, written by, it was a travel um, magazine, someone posted today, they came over, the writer, travel writer stayed at the Timbers, I'm not sure if you saw the article, but it was a well-written article and explained the entire process and uh, of the resort bubble, so it, it definitely worked for that, that travel writer. Um, as far as, we have what, six, six resort bubbles now? It might be more. I, I didn't check. Um, I think there might be more, but if Sue's on, which sometimes she is, or Sarah, if you have the number, put it on there. Okay. We haven't had much issues or problems with the, the, the bubble resorts, correct? I mean, it's been running pretty, pretty smoothly. Well, you know, put it this way, Mel. Um, there's... Um, you know, there's almost like two operations that I'm taking care of, right? There's the COVID-19 and then there's the day-to-day -day county operation. Um, if there's something that rises to um, the level where it gets in front of me directly, um, it, it would be like a significant problem. Um, I haven't heard anything come across my desk. It may have come across uh, my managing my, uh, director, Mike Dehelig, or perhaps Chief of Staff Sarah Blaine or Sue Konoho. Um, but I haven't heard of too many issues, uh, but it may have just been a case where somebody on the team addressed it quickly and um, they realized I have other things I'm taking care of at the same time too. Yeah, well, I think Charlie and I would have heard already if, it, if there were, it, 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 this coconut wireless is, is phenomenal. Um, uh, the, the next question is probably for both of you as well. Please feel free to jump in. It, it's, you know, we, 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 again, mahalo to Kauai for reporting the way you do. You report all cases. You report all cases and you let the public know what was travel related, what was uh, community spread. And that is quite different from how other counties are reporting. In fact, as all of our contacts on the other islands, uh, no one, is aware of how many of their positive cases are travel related or community spread. Uh, do either of you have the numbers on that? Is that something that the state releases? Um, um, they're not releasing it to the public. No, actually, actually it, is on the, it is on the State Department of Health website. If you go to hawaiicovid19.org uh -huh. and click on the, the see more data, um, there's a choice to look at travel, and there's a, a bar graph there that shows you cases every day, and it's red for community acquired and blue for travel related. And you can see that statewide, or you can also see it for each county. So that is reported on the state's website on a daily basis. Oh, thank you. HawaiiCovid19.com, and then more info? You know, I, I can't 
don't, yeah. don't, don't have to go check. I, I don't have the exact link in front of me, but there are many choices there. So you have to go into the data and then further into the data and then okay. you'll get a menu. Yeah, I, I've been on that site. I, I just never yeah. I couldn't find it. But you have you. to, there's so much information there. If you, if you know that you're looking for one thing, you can find it. It can be kind of hard to know everything that's there just by cruising around. But, but I know that information is of, of a lot of interest to people. It's been of a lot of interest to us here on Kauai in particular um, to, to understand because most of our cases from the very beginning have been travel related. So we've tracked that very, very closely. Yeah, you know, and, and I asked um, uh, Dr. Miskovich was on our show a week or so, maybe a couple of weeks ago. And I asked him, <laughs> what's, why is Kauai so different? How come the, we are picking up the travel related cases, but that's, it doesn't seem like the other islands are, are getting the same proportion of travel related cases. He couldn't answer the question, but he said it, it could have something to do with the demographic of the travelers that come to Kauai, which I, I come on, man, I, you know, I was, no. You so know, I, was just, I was just curious, why is it that we are picking up the travel related and the others aren't? I actually think the other, counties are also picking up travel related cases, but they haven't been able to be as successful as we have at keeping down the community acquired cases. And once it's spreading regularly in your community, that's going to become the majority of your cases because it's transmitted easily here. And it really hasn't ever taken hold in our community like that on Kauai. So we get a travel introduction and we do our case investigation and we isolate and quarantine people and we find a few other cases and we isolate and quarantine those and that, that little bit is finished. And then there's another, another travel introduced case and we're able to contain that also. So we've been, we've been fortunate in that we've been able to contain all of our travel cases. And, and the mayor and I have had many conversations in the emergency operations center about travel quarantine about the very difficult decision to opt out of the safe travels program when we saw a rapid increase in our cases but it's because of of mayor's willingness to make those hard decisions that we really have not seen established community spread here so the travel piece is much easier for us to see because it's almost all of what we're seeing our community acquired cases are sporadic yeah and i i think you know it it provides a good segue um, to at least give the listeners and viewers a, a good snapshot of, I think what we're all dealing with um, as, as far as the incident management team, it, it boils down a lot down to resource management and labor management as well. Anybody that has uh, been in a management position understands that they have to manage their labor resources, their, their uh, how many people they can get deployed um, to accomplish a mission, as, as well as the resource side, PPE, um, you know, all the resources that we have, because we, it's not like we have people sitting on the bench um, waiting to, to get vaccines distributed, right? So when we're taking a look at the prioritization of our operation, um, I can tell you a part of the reason why I believe the vaccine program has been successful on Koi is because we've allowed our partners and the Department of Health to focus their efforts on getting vaccines distributed. Now, if we started having a huge increase in cases where our hospitals got pushed to the red line and our Department of Health was tied up with having to do contact tracing, um, it would be a, a different picture. We have a limited amount of people uh, that can do contact tracing as well as administering the vaccine. And so it, it's a lot of our policy decisions um, are based on the overall big picture, which is really hard to explain at times, but it, you know, this provides a good, at least opportunity to get people to realize that we have to shift our resources and our labor management to what our priorities are going to be um, right now, we're hoping to get as much vaccines deployed um, through the schedule as possible. And we're all trying to keep the numbers at a manageable level so that our workers can, can focus on that operation. Uh, once we deviate and we have to shift priorities, of course, people can expect that you're going to have a slowdown uh, somewhere else in the operation. So I think 
uh, I wanted to get that point across. All right. Um, <clears throat> now let's get to some of the questions. Um, for the well, mayor. Me, uh, oh, go ahead, Charlie. Please. You know, I, I'm glad. I'm glad you uh, answered that, Mayor, because I wanted to find out. You know, a lot of times I'll, I'll, I'll post something, not not to stir anything, but just to throw the hint, like, oh, okay, okay, gang, if if we don't if we don't behave, this is what the alternative is, and you're not going to like the alternative. Saying what you just said, and you concentrate, we, we try to concentrate on what we have on the plate now and suppress it. We, we always hear about these um, individuals not wearing masks, gatherings, large gatherings on the beach and stuff like that. So far, I have to say we've been pretty lucky because we haven't seen any breakouts from those incidents. Okay. The thing I worry about, though, is what if we do have a major breakout? And, and, and so basically... What you're working on now, you're going to have to put that on a back burner and go pay attention to that, right? So that doesn't run away from us. Yeah, are, are they, do you feel there's enough enforcement being done for like, you know, even these people that, um, and, and I, you know, it, 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 gets, it gets the people that are following the rules kind of riled up that, you know, like when we have certain protests on certain days here on Hawaii and all islands, you're always going to get the group show up that knock away the mask. So all of a sudden, people just get all, oh, you know, crazy over this. And, and I can see the frustration just continually mounting. It, it's like it's never ending. How do we address those kind of problems? Well, it's difficult. I think it starts with leadership. I mean, you know, information in today's day and age is a double-edged sword. You know, when I was growing up, uh, we got our information uh, from the library with the Dewey Decimal System. So there was a, a very conscious effort to have to go and do research. We got our uh, information from the news. Um, with social media, uh, it has empowered a lot of people to basically get information out, um, be self-proclaimed experts. And, and if you have uh, elected leadership in which people trust, um, really, you know, helping to get that misinformation out and verifying it, it, it makes it very challenging for people to be able to sift through what's fact and what's fiction, what's good information, what's misinformation. And I think in a large part, uh, we've seen that unfold in front of our eyes. You know, um, it, information can be very powerful. And if you're in a position of power, it's your responsibility to get good information out there and exercise your authority in a responsible manner for the good of society, for, for the healing of people, for the bringing uh, of communities together instead of creating division. Um, that is a very complicated question, Uncle Charlie. It's something that we are challenged with every single day, and it can get quite emotional and it can get quite um, divisive, but I just urge people to really uh, have an open mind on both ends, but to have a pragmatic conversation about what is reality, what has uh, evidence-based um, science-backed uh, information as far as the pandemic response. And, you know, the numbers across the nation uh, tell a story. I mean, the amount of people that are passing away on the mainland is uh, phenomenal in, in the worst possible way. And fortunately, Kauai has been spared that sort of heartache. You know, I lost my mom um, as she was on a ventilator. I, and, you know, but I was able to be right next to her. It's not something that you want to see a loved one uh, pass away like uh and so i think koi has been spared a lot of the tragedy um and you know living in hawaii and living on koi things can seem like we're in a bubble at times i remember being in high school and seeing uh you know the rodney king and and the riots in los angeles and thinking is this real because we we really um in a sense um have been able to live a, a safe lifestyle, a healthy lifestyle. 
And so, you know, like I said, sometimes reality doesn't hit us. Uh, in this case, I hope it never does because uh, speaking to people that come from those areas that are hard hit, um, it's extremely stressful, it's heartbreaking. And, um, and then by then it's too late, right? You can't undo that. Well, you know, I hope, uh, you know, for our viewers out there that are listening, because I, I, I've, I've, I've been seeing it happen more often than, than I would like to. You know, when you've got residents basically telling someone that appears to be a, a non-resident, you know, walking, say, down in Poipu. And, you know, they're, they're kind of in the open, but nevertheless, I, you know, um, you just hear them call out, hey, where's your mask? Put on your mask. I, I can see the level of agitation already starting. And that's, that's what I'm afraid of. Because they, they, there's going to there's gonna come a time when there's going to be some people that just won't be able to control the emotion. And I, I think it's going to get the best of them. And I hope that doesn't happen. But I, you know, I just wanted to address that because we're seeing it more and more because the vaccine is, you know, it, it's sort of like, okay, you get vaccine, okay, you protect it, okay, now I can go on my business. I don't need to wear this mask anymore. And I said, whoa, 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 whoa. That's, that's the wrong message right there. We, we still got to do our part until we know for sure. And like Dr. Fauci says, right, to get to the herd immunity, we're looking at the 70 to 75 percentile range in, in, in any community. Well, if we don't slow down in vaccines, we, it's going to be a while before we, we hit those targets, those, those numbers. So I just, I just wanted to bring it out there. Mel? Well, time flies when you're having fun, man. Um, Dr. Behrman, man, a I, 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 uh, couple, couple of health department questions. The first one, if you had COVID, if you already had the disease, do you, are you still, should you still get the vaccine? Yes, you should definitely get the vaccine, but not until you've recovered. So not until your isolation period is over with. Again, your doctor should be your best advisor on that, your personal doctor, correct? Yeah. And then there was a question, so, uh, someone just posted that their 75 year old parent, uh, or I think it was father is gonna miss this cycle. I'm assuming when we move to the next tier, you're gonna be welcoming them anyway, right? They just need to register. Yeah, I mean, they, there, there isn't anything that's been missed right now. Both, um, all three of the hospitals have clinics scheduled through the end of the month and are planning on scheduling more into February. So you, uh, someone 75 or older can register at any point to get their first vaccine. Okay. And then you Mayor? Know, we, oh, we, we actually, we, we did a segment where we, we told people, because a lot of our 75 year olds, I, I'm sure a lot of them know how to operate a computer, how to, how to log on, sign on, but there's, there's some that don't. And we've been asking everybody that if you know a kupuna and you can help them log on, please do. Because we see at times they don't get hard time. They, sometimes the, the thing not going to flow as smooth because I know the hospitals like where um, my workers and I at, because we have the, the contract at the hospital and we, you know, everybody needs to be vaccinated when you work at a hospital. You got to go online. And, 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 you know, for our viewers, the forms are very easy to follow. Very easy to follow. You just gotta, you know, just just answer the questions and bingo, you'll you'll get a response and you'll get locked into an appointment time. So the, you know that's how because like you said, Dr. Berman, uh, you know they're elected to do their schedule. They're not leaving it up to fans. So they'll enter that information later on. So for those of you, you know, wanting to uh, get an appointment, just just go on the uh, hhsc.org. You can go on you can go on their website and you can sign up there. And, 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 and if you know any kupunas out there that's having a hard time, please go and help them. Because our objective is getting as much as possible, getting that vaccine into the arms as much as possible. Uh, Uncle Charlie, the, the same website that I mentioned earlier, kawaii.gov slash vaccine, um, has links to the hospitals, to, to all Perfect. of the hospital sites. Okay. Good. Take advantage of those that those links, people, again, kawaii.gov forward slash vaccine, very simple. Also, elderly affairs, uh, the county office of elderly affairs, 241-4470, 241-4470. Thank you, Sarah. I'm reading Sarah's post and it's like- uh, <laughs> I'm wondering what's always... making the mayor laugh. 
Because he called him Uncle Charlie. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I, thought I, was gonna, I was not going to see. Yes. Okay. Oh, don't awful. worry. Uh, I, I am honored. I received my AARP envelope today. Don't worry. Don't worry. It's you know, <laughs> I tell you, I have, you know, Mayor, I have, I have uh, adopted so many nieces and nephews from this show. People older than me calling me Uncle Mel. But I love it when you come on and you say, hey, Mel, hi, Uncle Charlie. That just makes my day. I just want you okay, to know. Okay, don't have to rub it in. <laughs> well, turn it. I should call you Uncle Mel then. Probably. Oh, man. <laughs> sure, <laughs> sure, Auntie Janet. Anytime, Auntie Janet. Um, no, but it's a sign of love and respect. You know, I know it's not, I mean, you know, but it could be, I mean, Mel, me and you are not that far apart in age. I mean, you <laughs> no, think I know. <laughs> We're in the same I'd be honored generation. if you call me uncle. What the hell? <laughs> um, don't forget your uncle on my birthday now. <laughs> yeah. Hey, um, kind of, kind of going a little bit away. Uh, one of the questions was about uh, youth sports. We know that the state has basically canceled all the high school sports. Yeah. Uh, any anything different for Kauai? Not as far as the the high school, but uh, youth sports. Are we? Can you give us a little update on what's going on with that? You know, and it, so our whole thing was to create an environment where we can have some of these activities because we understand um, the importance of having, uh, you know, youth activity, that sort of uh, ability for, for these kids to be able to interact socially in a safe way. We're, we're in tier four and we want to keep it that way because we've been allowing uh, what we call organized sports, which is uh, you have a you have a league, um, you use a county facility. You got to come in for a permit uh, to use that county facility. Now you're gonna have to submit a COVID-19 safety plan, which um, Parks and Rec and other members of the incident management team will review, and that is to ensure that there's spectator protocols, that there's uh, good hygiene protocols, distancing protocols. Um, and so on and so forth. So we're not in the business, as far as the county level, we're not in the business of telling leagues whether or not they should uh, have their season or not have their season. We're there to create an overall environment where sports can happen. I know that there's been a lot of confusion because you know the State Department of Education has announced the cancellation of winter sports, KIF announced the cancellation of winter sports. I cannot speak on their behalf, but I just have to assume that, you know, their level of acceptable risk um, was taken into consideration in making that call. Um, there's very little the county can do uh, because that is a state decision. Um, but in the meantime, there are other youth organizations that are organized um, that have decided to, to proceed with sports. They've submitted their safety plan. It met the merit where we could give it the green stamp of approval. And we hope it to, we hope to keep it that way. Um, of course, if it's a or unorganized where it's a pickup basketball game, um, with all of the COVID-19 safety protocols uh, remain in place as far as gatherings being limited to 25 outdoor, 10, indoor um but as far as organized sports um you know we let the league make the call um it's really out of our hands uh except through policy we can all create an environment where sports can happen um and that's about you know what i got to say on on organized sports hey i i'd like to see it happen you know for a lot of these kids it's not just sport, that's their, their window of opportunity to get a higher education. Um, and they're gonna learn things on that field that they're not gonna necessarily learn in the classroom setting as far as leadership, working as a team, um, and just things that they work through um, on that field with their coaches. Absolutely, man, absolutely. I cannot disagree with you there. I think that covers up all. Um, as far as the tiers, Mayor, um, we, we looks like we're on track. We're not we're not in danger of um, moving tiers or anything like that. Kauai's for for uh, all intents and purposes doing quite well. In your opinion? Yeah, we're we're doing quite well, and um, you know we're in a much different situation today than we were uh, when we started, and even two months after we started, you know, three months ago. 
Um, and so, you know, as we go along, there are more tools that are being deployed. The Aloha Safe app um, has been um, released. I think uh, uh, if we can get the visitor industry to get their guests to participate, that'll be another um, potentially helpful tool uh, moving forward. The vaccines um, are, are getting out there in people's arms. And so um, I'm very hopeful and I'm very optimistic. And in general, you know, the people on Kauai, they have a general care for other people. You know, it's a, it's a different place. It's a small community. Um, most people have a general sense of concern and are willing to make uh, sacrifices to keep each other safe. And so my position as mayor, it puts me in a good spot um, because uh, just on a foundational basis, when you have a community that cares about one another, that's willing to make sacrifices over a prolonged period of time, understanding that, yeah, it sucks, but we're gonna get through this. We're gonna get through this together. And you know, we care about other people. It makes my life, my job and our team's job um, so much easier. Well, that hour went by way too quick. Uh, I did want to give both of you an opportunity to address our viewers. Um, Dr. Behrman, you want to go first and just share whatever's on your mind and your heart. Scold them if you have to. Um, let them know the importance, whatever. I, I'm a big believer in, in the carrot rather than the stick and encouraging people to do the right thing and leading by example. I, I do want to do a shout out to our Medical Reserve Corps, which are volunteers here on Kauai because when people do go get vaccinated at the pod that's run by the Department of Health, almost all of the people giving vaccines are volunteers from our Medical Reserve Corps. And when the mayor was talking about our resources and how we use limited resources, we only have you know, a handful of nurses working in the health department. So if we were relying on them to do all the vaccinating, we wouldn't be able to do all the other things we do. So it's another example of how our community has come together and people really take seriously doing the right thing to help each other. And these aren't people showing up once in a while to vaccinate, they're vaccinating for four or five hours a day, two and three days a week. So huge mahalo to that group. Um, and also just to our community for continuing to, to stay with it. It's been a, it's a long, hard road and everybody would like it to be over and it's not quite yet. There's, I think there's really a lot of reason for optimism, but we also don't wanna lose the ground that we've made. So again, thank you and, and acknowledgement to our community for continuing to, to stay the course and um, keep up the good work that we've managed for so long. And thank you again for the opportunity to speak here, Mel and Charlie. <laughs> From Auntie Janet. <laughs> Mayor? Well, I wanna thank my, my wife and my daughter, you know, my son, you know, my family for just allowing me to, to, to do this because, um, uh, it, it's a big challenge. This is probably one of the biggest challenges that, that I've been faced with in my, in my years here. Um, but I, I feel very honored to be able to help during challenging times. And uh, in, in a weird way, I feel like I'm sort of in my comfort zone when there's a big challenge. Um, and I know it's not easy. You know, they got to take care of things on the home front. Uh, um, they have to be very patient with me as I go through my own uh, unraveling at home you should see I redo the garage like every week uh, you know I'm tearing apart the house and putting it all back together again driving them crazy at home coming to work driving them crazy at work so I do want to thank them you know they've been patient with me and supportive I, I want to thank our team um, which includes everybody out there on the whole island of Kauai Nihau uh, for just doing their part and you know Dr. Behrman uh, she said something that didn't sit well with me. She said something to the tune of, you know, I'm not always, you know, I'm not the most optimistic. I wouldn't, I wouldn't characterize as uh, not being optimistic because you certainly are not pessimistic. I think what you provide for us is just the straight talk in a very calm way. That's very, uh, that, that's very easy to trust, um, at least for, for our team. And that's why it's, quite frankly, a, a big help in our decision-making um, because you present facts. And I think that's what's important to get out to people are just good information and facts. Um, Happy New Year, 
2021 is going to be better than 2020. I'm committed to doing everything to make sure that that happens. And um, we're, we're going to get through this. I'm very hopeful. Every day seems to be better than the day before. And people that are going through big challenges, hey, you know, we're going we're, we're gonna to do everything we can to get you up and running. I need people to be optimistic, to help be a part of bringing our community together, because I know it's a long haul. It is. It, it can wear thin. Um, people are getting fatigued. But look, every day better. And uh, we're going to do things the way Koi uh, has done things in the past. And we're going to lead by example. And when this is done, we're going to look at Koi as a model of how things should be um, just on every single level. So thank you for allowing me to be a, a part of this. Thank you, Mayor. Charlie, Uncle Charlie. Well, first of all, I'd like to say mahalo to our two special guests tonight, uh, Dr. Berman and Mayor Kawakami. Thank you so much for, uh, you know, just being straight, advising the people out there. Um, you know, a lot of things that's been on people's minds. Uh, to our viewers, I know I've been watching the comments tonight and, you know, trust me when I say it, I understand the frustration. Uh, my wife is in that age groups. 65 and over, and she has to wait. Um, I got my vaccine before her only because of the job. Uh, but I, I have uh, faith and confidence that her, her number will be called and she will go and get the vaccine. Until then, we practice the, the, the safety protocols that we have designated. And I, I know many of you out there do the same because you write to me every day on Facebook that you're doing the same. When I, when I write a post about being safe, you're commenting that, yes, you're doing the same. So I hope you folks out there just carry on. I wish there was a Mel and Uncle Charlie for each island to give some comfort to the people that are on our show. That, you know, I know sometimes it's, it's tough because maybe government on your island is not listening the way Kauai, how we're listening to uh, our government officials here. We always said this, that a lot of times you might not be able to change people's minds, but we will give you information to keep you safe. And that's what it's all about. Keep you safe so you can cross that goal line. And whatever it has to be done, we're gonna make sure that you get that information. So to our viewers out there, please do not give up on yourself, do not give up on us. We just try to bring the information and if it helps, secure yourself, create that safety bubble around you until you can get that vaccination. And it may take some time, but it will get done, I believe, wholeheartedly. Okay, Mel? Thank you, Charles. Thank you, Mayor, Dr. Berman. Appreciate you guys again. Uh, you know, patience is, is key in this. I, 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 I see the frustration uh, from so many of our viewers. Um, listen, people, we gotta be patient. We are, you know, re really, we're part of history right now. We're, we're, we're making history and it's still relatively new. And um, so we, we got to roll with the punches, gang, and we got to make sure we take care of the ones that needs to be taken care of. Patience is going to, is going to carry us through this. Also, Dr. Behrman's comment about not being, I, you know, cautiously optimistic, I think is, is uh, and I think that's what we appreciate. Uh, as Charlie said, you know, we, time and time again, when, when, you, when you both speak, to the people, whether it's through a press release, a press conference, a TV interview, a radio interview. For some reason, we on Kauai anyway, feel like we're getting the straight information. Whether good or bad, we get it straight and, and it's something that we can take to the bank. And I think that that's what I appreciate more than more than anything. And uh, and it has continued from day one. It, it, it was that way and, it, and it's that way today. So. Uh, your, your team is just remarkable. Uh, we are blessed to be here in Kauai. And I, I, you know, we try not to be Hawaii, uh, Kauai centric. We try not to be Kauai centric, but listen, we've sent invites out to former Mayor Caldwell, Mayor Victorino, Mayor Kim. We've sent in invitations out to many people across the state. They just don't want to come on our show. So there's not much more we can do um, other than keep asking. So we appreciate the two of you. We thank you guys for your hard work. Um, ladies and gentlemen, again, you know, let's be patient. Let's let's uh, share aloha with everybody, and let's get through this as quick as we can. Take care, you guys. Um, tomorrow night we're back here at seven o'clock. Uh, Uncle Charlie, 
<laughs> make 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 sure you guys listen to Uncle Charlie now. Okay. <laughs> Just listen to Uncle Charlie. <laughs> Two things you guys gotta remember tonight. Two things. That's it. Kawaii.gov forward slash vaccine. Write it down. Kawaii.gov forward slash vaccine or our office of economic uh, office of elderly affairs 2414470. Listen, people, the worst thing you can do is go on Facebook and ask a question. Don't do it. Because you're gonna get 200 answers from 200 different people all wrong. Kawaii.gov forward slash vaccine 2414470 and you get the right answers, okay? Well, they can call Uncle Charlie. Charlie. Just call Uncle Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> See what I gotta put up with every night? I gotta put up with this every single stinking night. Sorry. Love you guys. Take care, guys. God bless. We'll see you guys tomorrow night at seven o'clock. Take care. And of course, you guys stay safe. Aloha. Yeah, aloha. Good night.